Hello everyone, and today I got something special for you. Today we're going to experiment. And no, I don't mean with a strap on or handcuffs or magic mushrooms. I mean with a good old fashioned, not really old fashioned, but a good old fashioned iceberg video. Yes, we're gonna try that format today. And I'm very excited because I worked very hard on this. I actually ended up making my own. And what better theme to have than a not safe for life slash like lost media gore iceberg. And you know, I found uh, an iceberg actually with a font that could make comic sans cry and then i made my own and well with that i ask that you go ahead and click subscribe real quick go down in the comments and uh, check out my preview for my uh infamous four series which is a apparently a series too controversial for youtube as they uh they told me not to do it so it's gonna be a patreon exclusive so go check that out check out our discord and other links in the description as well and I should mention that I made these levels and stuff, but like the contents within them, I'm just going to say it in no particular order. So like, obviously you, you can see this here. Uh, we're going to go over some interesting stuff. We're going to go over some real heavy stuff. So I'm, I'm not trying to say one case is greater than the other, if you will. Just want to clarify that. Starting off strong with something that piqued my interest is actually a lost horror movie that was filmed to completion. The movie was All American Massacre, and it would have been a spin off series to the famous Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, uh, 1 and 2 specifically, which I'm a big fan of, at least 1. I've grown to love 2 as time's come on, gone on, but anyway, it would have starred Bill Mosley as Chop Top, and it would have taken basically just been a combination of modern acts, uh, like the court proceedings, kind of like Devil's Re the third Devil's Rejects movie, uh, I forget what it was called. And then with some flashbacks and stuff. It, it, it was really cool and I guess was filmed to completion, but it never saw a release for one reason or another. And there's of course rumors of a bootleg of it, but I've never seen anything of it and I don't know of any way to get it. However, if there really is a way, I would like to watch it. The Lost Last House on the left footage is something that is, well, it's also sparked a lot of controversy even nowadays with, even with the fascination of gore and heavier, weird faux snuff horror movies. Last, on the, Last House on the Left originally had a much larger cut, but the scenes were, like, the movie was so gr bad at the time. Now, mind you, this also uh, was at theaters double featuring and drive-ins with the, the, with the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre that claimed to be a true story as well, so pretty heavy time for the 70s uh, <laughs> with a lot more conservative values. Uh, the extended cut or the full cut, if you will, it included stills of like, I guess those are the only things that really remain are the stills, but there was a lesbian rape scene, um, a few random tidbits of nudity, really, and then a much more extended scene, an infamous scene that I think everybody's familiar with, you know which one. It's garnered almost some of the largest controversy in uh, horror movie history, and in fact, like cinematographers and like projection people were pressured to destroy the film by audience goers because they were so disturbed. In fact, some people did when they saw the prints. Like it got to a point where other theaters would be like, "Hey, how long is your cut?" I'm like, "Oh, a little longer," you know, things like that. So there's been various releases of this that have uh, given more footage, but the whole complete picture of uh, feature film is in fact lost as a whole so that's pretty interesting and a lot of people wish to see that and given that it's a horror movie i mean i'm on board another movie related entry is actually from a cult classic for gore hounds and well horror movie junkies alike is a deleted scene from cannibal holocaust yeah that one uh the movie that was so uh real at the time i guess that people thought it was a real snuff film it was kind of like what the blair witch project wanted to be um, the movie basically just followed uh, people researching in an Amazon, rain, like researching tribes, tribes in the Amazon. Uh, you already get where it's going. If you don't know, look it up. It's pretty, uh, it's worth watching once, but it's really grotesque. Anyway, the scene that was deleted, and there's still a few stills of it, I guess. Uh, a warrior was injured in, in his leg or something, so they lower him into the river with uh, piranhas. And I guess it's, there was a, 
a quote malfunction because they couldn't get the piranhas to cooperate i'm sorry like what <laughs> how were they doing this <laughs> that's questionable in itself but that's the deleted scene and for the tip of the iceberg, we're finishing off with something that is actually lost media and would be categorized as gore, and that is the death of Brandon Lee uh, during the shooting of The Crow. And The Crow was a very... Uh, I, I like The Crow. Uh, it was a cool movie. In fact, I think I kind of want to watch it again in some older movies like that. I haven't really got, sat down and watched anything classic, quote-unquote, in a while. But uh, Brandon Lee was the son of none other than Bruce Lee, and he was quickly rising to fame, and this was a very big uh, spot for him as the lead role in The Crow, and what happened was, is during some sort of action scene, obviously, in some sort of fight, um, their prop gun, which only fired blanks, jammed, so when they tried to fire a round again, it actually, the resulting explosion sent the shrapnel, like, of the uh, blank round into Brandon as if he got well shot by a bullet and that actually killed him. Some say the director destroyed the film, but a lot of cameramen say otherwise, but uh, nobody on the surface here, if you will, has seen the uh, death footage so far, so it's probably destroyed. Moving on down and moving on down the iceberg. As we move down the iceberg, we're going to talk about uh, somebody who's been talked about quite a bit recently, and in fact, I made a video about him, and that's Marilyn Manson. And we're going to talk about the infamous groupie tape specifically. So... Groupie was supposed to be, quote, a short film made by Marilyn Manson and uh, his bandmates in the, uh, I believe it was in the late 90s. Yeah, it was in the late 90s or mid 90s. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't fucking remember. Um, <laughs> and basically, I mean, only Andy Dick and his and Man Manson's manager have seen this film and they and his manager even said like and his lawyer I think advised him to never make it public otherwise he could be criminally prosecuted so and with the recent things that have happened is this really like I mean where do you think this is going to go with uh, a short film quote unquote revolving around physical verbal borderline possibly full on sexual abuse and drinking piss and sucking each other's dicks I mean, hey, bro, he had a condom on, though, so it's all, it's straight, right? I'm not trying to diss anybody who's homosexual. I just think it's fucking comical. Uh, either that or they just knew how gross they, each other were. It's, it's one hell of a mess, supposedly, on the little bit that is public and that was made on his, like, video CD album. I, I think it was a long ro hard road out of hell. I don't remember if that was what it was called. I'm really out of touch with my Manson. I fell off being a fan of Manson. Uh... Honestly, years back, like when he released that Arma goddamn motherfucking getting cringe shit, it's like that was the last time I listened to him, and I was like, wow, uh, I got so excited at the time because I thought it was New Marilyn Manson. But then with all the controversy now, it makes it even worse. He's just a hot, gross mess. Check out my video on him to watch me make fun of him. I figure my audience would like this hat, so I'm gonna wear this for the rest of my entire YouTube career because uh, it's certified fresh, motherfucker. No, I'm kidding. That's actually my son's. I mean, I'm, I'm down with the craft and all, but no, you ain't gonna catch me wearing that. Anyway, I figured I'd add this to add to the list to kind of summarize some things, and it's um, some unsurprising things. Uh, ogreish, rotten, best gore, the shock gore sites in general on the surface, okay? And the reason they're here is because, I mean, it's pretty much the norm now. This is not too shocking. I mean, Rotten, I think, is defunct. Ogreish actually rebranded and became Live Leak, which is interesting enough, I guess. These gore sites are basically in the realm of just basic shock value by today's standards, which is really disturbing. But, I mean, they've, they still garner controversy, and we'll kind of briefly talk about that later here in the video about with some things down the list. But, I mean, Best Gore hosted one lunatic, one ice pick. And, I mean, <laughs> it, it's, uh, they're, they're worth mentioning. But it doesn't need to get a lower tier, is what I'm saying. But it, it needs to be here, I feel, because anybody who hasn't seen these sites probably shouldn't, and the people that are well-versed in them do have to admit the, the concept of a website that just showcases actual death and just ma like just gore in general is pretty disturbing on a surface thought. Then we have a bizarre thing um, that I wanted to mention, and I know it's not quite gore, and it's not, but it is lost media, and, and in my opinion, it is definitely not safe for life, especially if you were a Led Zeppelin fan, because I'm talking about the Led Zeppelin Mud Shark uh, sex tape, and you might be asking, what? And if you have to ask who Led Zeppelin is, I really just kind of want to hit you, like, with a stick several times like a bamboo stick thin like the kind of one that when you swing it it makes a whoosh sound yeah that that's bullshit 
Go listen to Led Zeppelin. In fact, you probably have before and you didn't know. Uh, the band that made Stairway to Heaven. Possibly the greatest and most revolutionary rock band in history. Yeah, fuck. It, don't, 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 don't at me with Beatles and shit. Anyway, my fanboyism of Led Zeppelin aside, what happened was is they played a concert at, for the Seattle Pop Festival in the summer of 69. And, uh... With the smaller band, it's time vanilla fudge, and I guess they hit it off or something. They went to this hotel that was uh, like harbor side, and the rules back then were that you could actually fish out your bedroom window, which is weird, but I guess cool if you like the fish. So they started fishing, and I guess they had a groupie with them. Gross. Her, uh, I mean, to each their own. That's a lot of that, that's a lot of that's a lot of sweaty. Bandex men and, well, I mean, proper plant kind of just wore jeans that he had to Crisco himself to get into, but, uh... Anyway. <laughs> the story goes that they were recording this, they're recording their party, everybody's getting fucked up, and they fished up a mud shark, and what they did with the mud shark is either put pieces of it in her vagina, or try to shove the whole thing in her forcibly, and it was like an act of unconsensual, well, it was rape. And, uh... The video has been proven to be true by a member of Vanilla Fudge, but he claims the entire thing was consensual, and in fact, she was it was all laughs and for just shits and giggles, and uh, it was, in fact, a red snapper, not a shark, and he was pretty adamant about it. But regardless, the story is creepy because of... Uh, nobody else wants to talk about it. It obviously never surfaced, and I don't think I want it to. However, it's like, th this is definitely in a time where... Uh, sexual abuse is rampant and it's a kind of a scary thought to think of even something like that yeah it sounds comical and goofy on the surface but when you really think about it that's like fucking 10 guys shoving a fish in someone's twat that's unconsensual or consensual consensual okay weird but unconsensual that's really fucking mortifying but anyway i like led zeppelin i'm, I'm gonna hope that this is a a consensual act with a red snapper Coming to the end of this tier is a documentary called Heartbeat in the Brain. Right? Yeah, Heartbeat in the Brain. In 1970, uh, <laughs> with the intent of testing the hypothesis that trepanation can be used to fully increase cerebral circulation to the brain and let the heartbeat fully express itself through the brain. And for those of you who, who don't know what trepanation is, that's lobotomy. And for those of you who don't know what lobotomy is, that's when they would bore a hole through into your brain with a drill. Uh, you, you, you'd be conscious for this too, by the way. This was regular practice all the way up until, I think, the 80s. Uh, it went kind of... Yeah, just holy shit. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Amanda Fielding is a drug policy uh, reformer, and in this documentary, she bores a hole into her own head and brain with a dentist drill. And she's alive and well. Um, she's most famous for her opinions on, like, psychedelics and things like that. Uh, apparently, I mean, I hope she opened her, her fucking third eye, but the film has been, well, lost. Um... However, it is kind of an exception, an exception, I'm sorry, because in 2011, it just premiered again at a film festival in London for no apparent reason, I guess. But it was lost up until then, and it's actually still, I guess, difficult to find uh, in full. Um, don't quote me on that, though. I didn't actually go looking to confirm that part. I just, uh, I just thought it was very fascinating, It's and it's true gore. I mean, that's a... Uh, she does it to herself. <laughs> and we're going on down. We're going on down. And getting into our third section, we're starting to get a little bit more grim. And we're going to talk about the death of WWE superstar Owen Hart. Owen Hart was actually a very famous wrestler and one that I actually remember. I wasn't too big in the wrestling growing up, but I pittered in and out of it just because of uh, certain family members and certain friends when I was younger. So I'm pretty knowledgeable, I suppose. But the weird part about this gruesome death caught in film is that it was streamed back when pay-per-view was a thing in 1999. It was, uh, it, it was, so, I mean, thousands of people saw this, yet nobody recorded it, or there was no way that anybody got it, or at least they haven't brought it to the surface. Uh, what happened was Owen Hart was supposed to enter the ring kind of like a superhero, and he was on a harness, and he was going to be lowered in, but instead he fell 78 feet off after the clip malfunctioned and hit the ring. Yeah. In fact, uh, what gets worse is 
it apparently i guess the uh the D I don't want to keep wanting to call it a DVR, but I don't even think it's that back then. But the pay-per-view would act the, the, the screen cut when this happened. But what's really messed up is that uh, they continued the show, and in fact, his bloodstains were still in the ring as it continued, and they didn't mention anything to the people watching, but they did mention it to the people who were there present, I believe it was. And yeah, I mean, can you imagine still seeing his blood and having to first perform a show like that? That's terrifying. That's a lot of blood. That man died. <laughs> It's not, that's not good. So moving on down, and I want to keep this in mind with everybody that I'm actually trying, I try to avoid do, putting stuff on here that I've already covered, but my channel just covers the most uh, interesting, I think, of graphic content. And with this, I wanted to put the suicide video of Christine Chubbuck on here because this is actually one instance of gore that fascinates me for some reason. Perhaps because it was the first I heard about this before Bud Dwyer when I was younger, and Bud Dwyer's is uh, Bud Dwyer. Bud Dwyer's Bud Dwyer, and I made a video about him as well. Just saying. But Christine Chubbuck was a news reporter for Sarasota, like the Sun News or something like that, and. Uh, she ended up killing herself. We already know about this. She shot herself on after a monologue on t live TV. And it's rumored uh, to be, well, not rumored. <laughs> I guess it's pretty factual that the tapes are locked in a law firm, supposedly. But, and there was a recreation that actually I featured in my video about this that was presumed to be the real footage, despite its crappy quality. But it was debunked pretty quick. I did that myself in my video with proper evidence. But now there's supposed audio recording of... Well, her uh, day on the news, if you will. So, listen to this for a minute. Hi, This was pretty recent, and if you notice that the key part where she makes her monologue and her death are cut out, but the voices match up. Uh, a lot of people theorize this could be from the movie Christine, which was about Christine Chubbuck, uh, that came out in 2016, but th so far it's actually pretty consistent with the actual day. Supposedly the uploader did not use the audio, the full audio, out of respect for Christine's brother, who is her surviving family member. And... I mean, I guess that's the case, but in a way, this seems a little too convenient, you know? And it's like, okay, how'd you get a private collector just to do this and you're not, and not, that didn't leak? Okay, this is my theory that if it was from a private collector that they recorded the news audio for the day, because they wanted to listen to it later and happened to catch that. And I mean, if you were offered a couple thousand dollars for something like that you were hanging on to, I think a lot of people would take that offer despite it being kind of morally wrong. It's just facts, that's what people do. To me, it seems pretty legit, but at the same time, I would, I, I kind of think it's bullshit, so I'm on the fence. How about you? What do you think? <laughs> Next thing I'd like to talk about here is the Grizzly Man audio. Yep, let's talk about animal safety in detail for a moment here. While we remember Timothy Treadwell, the guy called Grizzly Man, adopting the title for himself while he lived with fucking grizzly bears. Grizzly bears. Okay? Do, do do think about this. I, I maybe it's not so common anymore. Has anybody actually sat and watched animal documentaries just for the shit of it? Just maybe just a, 
oh shit animal planet time something like that because have you seen a fucking bear have you went to a zoo and saw a bear especially a grizzly bear okay grizzly bears on average weigh 600 pounds that's a lot okay and they also run 35 miles an hour that's fast you ever seen the revenant the one time Leonardo DiCaprio got a damn Oscar was for being mauled by a fucking grizzly bear in a movie. So do you want to guess how Timothy died? Hmm? Okay. Apparently Timothy's girlfriend uh, left the lens cap on in a hurry to record uh, her boyfriend who was posing in front of a brown uh, fucking grizzly bear that was coming at them at a pretty uh, fast pace, I guess. And, uh, you know... A true intellectual, uh, the boyfriend thought this was okay, and consequently was, well, being eaten alive by a bear. So, yeah, Rangers actually found scraps of his clothing in the camera. Yep, the lens cap was left on. That's kind of interesting. Uh, that would have been one hell of a video otherwise. According to Rangers, who have wit uh, listened to it, it's only two minutes in length because something, uh, a shortage in the film or something, so, man, that was just a... That was just a hot mess of shit anyway. The audio is sought after quite often online, and there was actually recently a fake that got up... Not recently, I'm sorry, this is actually pretty old, but... A, a, a pretty good fake surfaced online. Or at least it's presumed to be fake by a lot of people, because some witnesses claim that it's inconsistent with the first two minutes of the actual death audio. But it's pretty convincing when you listen to it. And whether or not it's real or not it, it's just it's it's messed up werner herzog is a german director who actually made the grizzly man documentary listened to it and just kind of looked at the person and said this needs to be destroyed yeah um it's not a quick death but timothy treadwell's audio that's definitely something that is lost media it would definitely be gore even if it's just gore for the ears it's uh i just think it's comical how he thought this would be a good idea and for this last level of this tier of the iceberg, or this level, if you will, is the close-up video and photos of the death of Pantera's guitarist Dimebag Daryl. And Pantera's fucking legendary, and the most, one of the most key figures in the band, if not the most key figure, was Dimebag. And Dimebag is regarded as one of the best guitarists of all time by a lot of people. One of the best. I didn't say the best, but in my opinion, probably the best. Uh, these people include Eddie Van Halen, the Rolling Stones have commented on this, and even Jimmy Page had something to say about Dimebag. Like, he was also just a fucking great guy. Like, watch anything with him in it, you will automatically feel like he's your friend, and then you get sad that he's dead. And then on top of it, the guitar solos can make your ears come. So, I... Hey. But a lot of people want to see his death, and this is what happened. So he was playing with Damage Plan, which is a post-Pantera band, uh, after they broke up, I think it was in the early 2000s, because of complications with the band and Phil Anselmo's heroin addiction. Uh, Damage Plan was playing at a small venue in Ohio, and a mentally ill uh, gunman named, I for actually forget his name, walked in, shot Dimebag to death, and started shooting other people and started taking hostages. This was all caught on film, and you can actually see this in certain documentaries and stuff, but it's like at a distance, and there's a lot of cuts, obviously, for obvious reasons. But a lot of people want to see the death, and you can kind of see his shoes, I think, in one picture that was released. And in fact, the death of the shooter was recorded too, because he took a hostage, um, and the responding officers shot over, uh, like right next, he was doing this whole thing. And he actually shot the guy in the head with the shotgun and saved the hostage. So, I, I mean, that's scarring for everybody, but that was all caught on film, too. So, a lot of people that are really into gore want to see that. And uh, I guess a lot of Pantera fans want to see it. Maybe it's closure that Dimebag is just finally dead. I don't know. They're hoping they'll come back as a zombie. Uh, that'd be pretty sweet, pretty metal, but all respect to Dimebag because, uh, I mean, he was just so fucking cool. As we go lower into this tier, and I mentioned... I figured I'd include more of a shock video tier because the things that were deep in a sense of graphic content or some the things that are shared quite often, things that are linked to you. So right off the bat, we're going to open up with uh, Ronnie McNutt. Y yeah, get it out. Get your McNutts out. Get all the McNutt out. Okay, we laugh yet? Okay. Okay. So my camera died and I had to charge it and then I like fell into my shit here. I had to adjust the robot wiener and everything. Okay, so Ronnie McNutt, it was, uh, you know, he was a combat veteran. I think he started two tours in Iraq. 
Uh, he had severe PTSD and depression. I, mean, I made a video about him, I went over this in detail, but all in all, it, it's something that is... Uh, it's a really sad and just kind of twisted story with a lot of misconceptions, is all I'm trying to say. And I know it's not lost media, and but his suicide is rather shocking to watch. And the problem with it is that shaman... Shaman? It's commonly shared among people and little edgy asshole little kids, basically. Like middle school kids that are just dicks. Because that's... You don't want to know why I'm saying it like that? It's because that's not cool to shock anyone with, let alone, uh, you know, just a kid seeing in general is uh, not very good. Okay, like that's not that I shouldn't have to explain this. That's not that's not good. He would often try to do uh Ronnie would often try to uh, advocate for PTSD and depression and stuff like that, but really he just couldn't grasp things himself, and he would often live stream and talk about death and other basically subjects that allude to him possibly harming himself. And this night was no different, but he was heavily drinking, and he got a phone call and just said that line. He said, well, I guess that's it. Put the rifle to his jaw and pulled the trigger. And yes, it was a rifle, by the way. It was a cheap Walmart rifle, and I believe it was a 22 LR round that did that. Yeah, so guns are guns are not bad, but guns are dangerous. Be careful around guns. Um, the result, by the way, if you're wondering, is best. Like I can only describe it as unzipping a watermelon. So it's per it's pretty bad. And speaking of shock video, 360 no scopes. We're gonna talk about 1444 and. 1444 is infamous and because it often ties into a creepypasta of sorts that says that it's going to bring forth a curse if you watch it. And I covered this on a separate video as well, as well as in the Ronnie McNupp video briefly. And the reality is it's the livestream suicide of a Russian man named Gleb, and it, it he he took his life with a Sega 12 carbine, which yeah, I confirmed that with the police reports and stuff, by the way, because there's a lot of debate about the weapon there too, and I, that's like half my comments, it's weird. Uh, this to me is more graphic than Ronnie McNutt's just based on the body's reaction when he died and the gasping and it's just terrible It's a very intense uh, and plus the quality. It's it was shot in like 720p instead of like a fucking dark throne cassette Where a potato or a Fisher Price camcorder or anything else like that like Ronnie McNutt's was pretty bad quality uh, Not saying hey, we needed an HD remaster or anything I'm just saying like it, it may it the effect of seeing something in higher definition is usually a uh, brings you closer to the reality of what you're watching. It's pr it's, it's messed up. Moving on to a more serious note is Kekma GA or Kekma.net or just Kekma, whatever you want to talk about. Kekna, Kekka, Kekma. Kekma is a hell of a shock site, and what happens is uh, it's in lieu of like meat spin or eat, eat your soup. If you guys remember those, if not, uh, I don't I don't recommend checking them out. But, uh, yeah, for those who do, for you know, if you know, you know. Anyway, what really makes this one terrible, however, is immediately the your computer is full screened onto a gore video of either someone shoving a screwdriver or wood screw into their urethra, a dog being skinned alive, or a man ejaculating onto, or some things have said into, I've never seen this, a burned child and adult man who were dead. And... A uh, confirmation window pops up and stuff, making it really hard to click off the site, forcing you to see this stuff. And what's really problematic is that it's an epilepsy hazard because there's a lot of flashing lights and then they have these screams that are just toned up on the volume so high to like ear rape setting. So that's a pretty bad one. So there you go. Don't open the links. I do not recommend it. And it's not funny to send people because you could actually kill somebody with epilepsy. Like that shit's not cool. Next on this list, we have ISIS videos. And it's kind of weird that that's singled out specifically, right? Well, it's because they kind of lack the theater and shock of cartel videos because of their extreme high production value. And I know I just, just said a minute ago that, you know, the better quality it is, the more rea to reality it brings you. Well, when ISIS shoots in 4K, it can make real death look fake. And that's really weird. I kind of forget actually where I left off. This is actually day two of recording this because of some uh, happenings in the real world here. Uh, 
So basically the point I'm trying to make with the ISIS videos in general though, uh, I apologize for this interrupted quality, is the fact that they're so, and I know it kind of contradicts what I said previously about, you know, the higher quality of a video you see, the more to reality it brings you basically. And, but with this, it takes it over the top because I was shown like a couple ISIS execution videos and the way they edit things, like the, the black and white, like uh, I forget what it's called, like the theater bars, uh, the transition screens, the soundtrack, and the way they died was shot in such, it was such like high definition that I actually thought that I was just watching a graphic movie. And then I realized like, oh, this is actually people dying. So it, it kind of takes the effect out and considering the political climate in the US, at least for the last over 20 years, being consistently in conflict with something in the Middle East, whether it's Al Qaeda or ISIS or, you know, certain people politically just trying to fucking poke Iran for some reason. Uh, Iran. I'm sorry, mispronunciation. I'd like to get things correct. It, it just takes away the effect for me, so that's why it's where it is in the iceberg, but it's still worth mentioning because, um, yeah, um, ISIS. And last but not least on this tier of the iceberg, we have two girls, one cup. And some of you are confused. Some of you are laughing that you're hearing this, but it's definitely worth mentioning. Uh, why? Because we've moved on to a generation whose new edgy trend is gore. And with it being gore comes, you know, desensitization to that. And so people seek more graphic and graphic content. And typically it's shared between young ass kids you know like middle school boys that's their culture right now and it's pretty disturbing it's like they're just picking up old dead 4chan shit and then running with it to be edgy and it's really bad to look at honestly it's cringy as hell however you know for those who grew up in the early 2000s this is a very special spot because this was an og spot of shock videos okay like this was uh the creme de la creme of shit if you will, you see, uh, because you youngsters are okay with murder and gore, and you're, but you're scared of, you know, boogers and poopy, even though you know, you're totally down to eat ass on the first day after somebody takes you to a Sonic drive-in. Um, that's fine, I mean, to each their own, but <laughs> a video girl where two girls eat chocolate rain straight from the tap. And I shouldn't say that technically because it was a log kind of mushy consistency. I mean, do you know how hard it was to find any imagery of this uh, without making it myself, I guess, just on Google Images? I was on one hell of a nostalgia trip, if you will, one that included some scenery that I, I kind of just thought I'd forget, but guess not. But yeah, uh, let's get down to the, I mean, it's, I mean, it's got boobs in it. Everybody likes titties, right? I mean, I don't know. Let's get the let's get the hell off this level of the iceberg now. Let's get to some uh, more horrific shit. Now, I will say, moving down the iceberg, that some of these interest me for uh, scientific reasons. Okay, this one is the Yellowstone acid pool video. You, we are that already just makes everybody immediately chime up if you know what it is, and if you don't know what it is, your curiosity has peaked. So what happened was it was the death of a guy named Colin Scott, who was blessed and cursed with having two uh, names, first names that you would expect to get into this kind of situation. I mean, I'm kidding, K kinda. But he was a 23 year old man hiking with his sister Sable, possibly from the Animal Crossing series, but I cannot confirm, on a prohibited path of Yellowstone National Park on June 7th of 2010. 2010, I think? They apparently were looking for a place to swim. Uh, I don't know if you know this, um, but uh, Yellowstone has a very prominent volcano. Like, it has a super volcano that could wipe out, like, the country, basically. It also has a lot of volcanic activity in general, so it has pools of, like, thermal acid and boiling water. Uh, there are hot springs, but uh, when a path says prohibited in these kind of areas, you would assume that one would know that uh, it's fucking dangerous. Not Colin, though. So what happened was, is Colin basically kneeled down to pose for a picture or a video. Apparently it was a video because his sister recorded him slipping in and screaming as he boiled in acidic water. Like, it's a thermal pool. It was acid. Okay. I don't know the chemistry makeup of it, but it was acid. And the, the, her attempts to rescue him were recorded, meaning I'm sure she was just like, 
doing it for the volume on her fucking phone. I'm not sure because the video is not public. However, the whole thing was recorded and she had no service, so she ran off to get help. But by the time the Rangers arrived, he was already dead. Colin was dead and above the water, barely, with his necklace and shirt basically just being the only items visible as he was visibly well melting and they could not retrieve his body so they just dissolved but the video was out there and it is uh suppressed by authorities of the uh, yellowstone national park but if it were ever leaked it would be well one the first acid bath death to ever be caught on camera uh to my knowledge and it would also just be like well a winner of the darwin awards i'm sorry like that's a dumb way to die but nonetheless this death is on a high on this list for lost media and not safe for life content because it is indeed lost and watching a guy scream in agony as he's quite literally melted alive comically and like he's in a pool of magma is pretty um you know scarring for some people anyway this next one's gonna hurt you writing your childhood depending on when you grew up speaking of which brush your teeth twice a day once in the morning and once at night before you go to bed um, you may not realize this, but your breath smells like a dog's asshole when you wake up. I promise you it's true. On top of it, you know, dental health is very important. Your gums aren't supposed to bleed when you floss. That's actually a sign of gingivitis and moving on to gum disease. So please take care of your mouth. But anyway, for the adults out there, we're going to talk about the death of the crocodile hunter Steve Irwin. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's really sad for some people, including myself. Also, use only pea-sized amounts of toothpaste on your toothbrush. That's all you need to spread across the otherwise you're just wasting anyway so if you grew up in the time when crocodile hunter was prominent you no doubt watched his show on animal planet he had over a 10-year run he owned a zoo in australia this guy was a badass okay he would jump out of a moving jeep just to pick apart an animal's shit with his hands and say that's beautiful uh, he was so intelligent and so just fucking amazing of a person that he owned one of the, I think the first and only, uh, at the time at least, albino crocodile as a captivity. Uh, his family still runs the zoo. He, he would have had a gra granddaughter now. I mean, the guy was badass. He had cobras spit in his eyes. Yet he died, the, the he, he dry humped crocodiles, okay? His shtick was jumping out of boats onto crocodiles. Living dinosaurs. But he died one of the dumbest deaths I could honestly think of him dying from and it's not like oh he stubbed his toe and fucking fell down the stairs it's actually second to that you see when steve Irwin was recording a show uh that was supposed to be based around his daughter bindi and they were just getting i think stock footage for it it was like a kids based show so they were swimming around the great barrier reef and filming uh short tail stingrays which are the largest stingrays in the world they could be up to two meters which is like six feet from ear to ear um, and they're usually not aggressive, but this time something happened. Uh, they're also kind of gumpy, like dumpy, derpy ass animals, okay? So they probably thought that his shadow was a shark, and it spun around and just started fucking pin missling him like a Pokemon, stabbing him 12 times in the chest, including piercing his heart. And this was all recorded. Now, the thing is about this is that. There was two witnesses, including the cameraman, and they did try to revive him for an hour before paramedics arrived and literally pronounced him dead within seconds. And all of this was recorded because at the request of Steve Irwin. Okay, Steve Irwin, I burped, I don't know if you heard that, excuse me. Steve Irwin said no matter what happens, even in an accident or death, continue rolling. And I'm assuming that's logically just so a learning, ethical kind of like, okay, this is what happened. Or I got bitten by what kind of snake today? Because, you know, you're from Australia, the land of the 30-foot spiders and the poisonous fucking everything. Yeah. Like, you won't catch me there without chainmail and a flamethrower. But this was all, you know, his last words were even recorded. And it was just, I'm dying, because they were trying to put pressure on it. I mean, his lungs are punctured, clearly. It, it was really bad. It, it, stingray, short tail stingrays have an 8-inch venomous barb, so he had no hope. There was no hope of surviving that. Uh, I heard rumors that he just ripped it out, and that's what killed him, and that was a long-standing story, but that's actually not true. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what happened, but regardless with his injuries, they were much too grave. Paramedics, even if they got to him, would not have been able to save him, but... Nonetheless, it's nonetheless. It's supposed to be a very desired piece of lost media, and it's very not safe for life and very gory. And supposedly, the tapes were destroyed by his wife, and 
there's rumors of otherwise, and there's a lot of fakes out there, but I guess we'll never know. Unless one day it eventually surfaces to ruin people's childhood. The funny thing about that is, is the cameraman uh, spoke to the Guardian, who said that they were under strict orders to keep recording, and he said he doesn't know what happened to the tape, by the way. So it could just be a rumor that they're destroyed so people don't go posting it or trying to look for it. Uh, I don't want to try to feed a conspiracy like that, but I'm just trying to speak out on what is apparently out there. Next on when animals attack, we have the 2010 SeaWorld attack and killing of Don Brand Show. On, Feb on February 24th, 2010, Don Brand Show performed a Dine with Shamu show with Till I Come. Till the fuck is that whale's name? Till he come? Till I come? <laughs> oh, and imagine that. By the way, he's the largest bull orca in SeaWorld. Till I come, the bull orca. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna call him Tilly Cum. No matter how you say it. Holy shit, I'm 12. Well, he was the largest. Hold on, I'm reading this here. He died uh, some years ago. But apparently, Tilly Cum, the fucking orca, <laughs> grabbed her by the ponytail and some witnesses say the arm. In fact, there's actually footage existing of her arm getting grabbed and it was used in a documentary but cuts off right there. So maybe he grabbed both. Uh, as we get down in here, you will know for a fact, based on you know, the autopsy that he most definitely grabbed her, her scalp and her hair. Um, anyway, the whale drug her down and beat her along the, the pool, basically. And they tried to rescue her by throwing a bunch of food out and to distract the orca. I mean, it's a fucking killer whale. Are you going to jump in there and wrestle it? I don't think so. We would have had Steve Irwin to help, but no, he died because of a damn stingray. I actually, hold on. I don't know who died first, to be honest with you. I think it was Steve Irwin. Uh, but dark joke aside, um, her spinal cord was severed, her jaw and cervical bone were broken, like shattered to bits, and both her knees were twisted around and dislocated, and her scalp still had its hair attached and was separated from her body. Uh, the cause of death was drowned in severe blunt force trauma because she was held underwater and thrashed around for 45 minutes before uh, Tilikum, Tilikum lets her, let her go. And they didn't go, well... Let's put this whale down or let it go. They went, let's put it in isolation till it dies. And that's pretty much what happened. And it's really sad. And it's like, you you know, there's it's a really sad death. It's unfortunate for Dawn. And people go, oh, well, if there's no whales in captivity. And I agree with that. But it's not her fault. She was just doing her job. I don't think she sat there fucking cattle prodding the whale and beating it. It's a, it is a wild animal. That's what happens when you fuck with one, trained or not. Don't, don't, don't do that. Especially something that literally has the word killer in its name. I don't assume it would want to just... Uh, the video does exist because there was a lot of spectators recording however nothing has been made public to this day and there's a very well known fake out there but it's not the killing uh wow man that's just that's just messed up and as the final part of this level, we have the Toolbox Killer's audio. And this audio is of the violent rape, torture, and murder of Shirley Ledford, who uh, the audio from this murder is actually used uh, supposedly to desensitize FBI agents because it's so horrible. And the transcripts are available online if you want to look for them. I'm not going to be help you with that. You can look at that up yourself. And it's really, really horrible to read. Uh, her last words were just, just do it, kill me. Like, it is very messed up. And they called them the Toolbox Murders because of what they used okay it's a very terrible terrible audio but it's never been made public uh lawrence bideker and roy norris were the toolbox killers and they raped tortured and killed five teenage girls in california in the 80s and for some people some reason people just want to hear that shit and i guess i get the morbid curiosity but i've read the transcripts myself uh, a few years back and once again before doing this video and i want to just let you know that um it's bad it's really it's really bad and um if it's actually true and presumably it is and mine hunter is a really good show on netflix that really needs another series but they p used this as a plot point that i thought was interesting too because they were trying to uh, a character was trying to basically get this guy to quit and that's what they were doing is having him listen to it and it's, it's hilarious honestly but nonetheless if that's actually true holy shit being part of the FBI is pretty spooky, it's pretty spooky, scary, spoopy, if you will. But, uh, let's start moving. Let's get down to that iceberg, huh? Everyone, now we've made it down to hell. We've made it down to the abyss of the iceberg. And I have this, uh, saved for things that have been confirmed to be real, but are very, very not safe for life. And your edgy opinions may vary, but here we are. 
And first to get this nightmare out of the way is Daisy's destruction, and I have said this more times in my channel recently than I could have ever cared to think about the fucking thing in my life. Oh, man, here we go. I actually have a full special on Patreon. This Daisy's Destruction and Peter Scully in general are going to be covered thoroughly in an episode of The Infamous Four, which is my series on Patreon that's going to be very, very controversial. And, and... And, and I really just don't like reading about it, honestly. It's just, it's messed up. This case is one that actually truly bothers me, and rightfully so. Many of you may know what this is, but Peter Scully is a world-renowned, for all the wrong reasons, pedophile and murder with over 75 victims, and he was responsible for a, a video thought to be an urban legend called Daisy's Destruction that he sold on the dark web for $10,000. And some famous... Oh, God, it's wording like that. But well-known people who got caught in major pedophile rings and stuff owned this video too. Peter Scully was basically the father of a genre of child porn called Hurtcore. And it's actually banned among major um, circles of pedophiles and that's how fucked up it is because what they do is that it's the whole premise is to inflict as much torture and pain as possible on a child while sexually abusing them as well until they inevitably die on camera. So yes, that would constitute as a snuff film. But one thing about Daisy's Destruction that people fail to remember here is that it's not just one video. So for those edgy boys claiming to, you know, have committed a crime by watching it, by the way, uh, they're forgetting to mention that there's actually other parts of the video. So it's only for $10,000 a pop, including one where they violated an 11-year-old, had her dig her own grave before killing her. Daisy actually lived can, and can no longer have children. She was 18 months old during this abuse. It's fucking horrible, by the way. Just the description of this tape and the fact that it exists is really, really revolting and nightmare inducing. Next we have Pseudo Scorpion, and I actually made a video about this one previously, but we'll go over it again for the sake of its depravity, because this is also very real. And in fact, it's not as hard to get as you think. And one should mention here that it's actually highly illegal to download this album. Uh, wrongfully fucking calling it that, because it is a musical project, quote unquote. It is 100% a crime, and there's a lot of uh, tracked downloads for it so do not go looking for this it is not on youtube those are fakes i debunked this in my video as well it's an audio album made by a person only known as senjin and there's been no confirmation of his or her identity however pseudo scorpion is full audio it's full of audio that each track actually circles around um, child porn videos from the deep web and including the final track scorpion being audio from daisy's destruction and i have a text message Honestly, the, even the thought of listening to it, you don't want to hear it. The opening track is a nine-year-old getting anally raped violently on camera, supposedly. So it is absolutely grotesque. This person has never been charged, and possibly there's been other projects that have been bought and sold on the deep web. I don't know. I haven't listened to it. But I'll tell you what, descriptions of it are that are if they're all consistent, and it, it's very fucking terrifying to even think about this existing. And it is, well, readily available. Why? Onward to tulips and rainbows, obviously, though, as we go down through this fucking abyss here, is Cartel Hell. Now, a little bit of disclaimer, there is a popular montage of cartel killings on video with the label Cartel Hell, but I'm using the title as a good summary of the major cartel slayings that are commonly passed around. I feel they're, they belong at a severe lower level just because of the depravity of the cartels in South America and Mexico and the way that I swear to God like fucking mad scientists when they go to kill somebody. Uh, I, if you watch my Funky Town gore video, you'll understand why, because to me that is the worst gore video and it is a cartel slaying where they have this guy on an IV drip of adrenaline or possibly methamphetamine to keep him alive, conscious, and feeling everything as they they do things that no person should be able to live through. So just a thought on that, it's the whole... This includes infamous videos like the Guerrero Flaying and the Chainsaw video, things like that. So these videos could actually rattle the most seasoned gore like Indulger videos, rarely include a quick death, and always prolong the victim's suffering. And I mean, from chainsaws to flaying to castration by Pitbull, I mean, it's out there if you can somehow d think of it. But that's why it's here. So, yeah. Next, we're going to move on to something that was actually brought to my attention by a subscriber and member of my Discord. And it's a video that I'm going to call One Guy Five Shotguns. And the reason I'm going to call it that is because the original title of this video was posted to Best Score back in about 2012, but was quickly removed. 
uh, by their staff, apparently, and you'll know why in a minute. I don't know if it's just the title or the context or both, but the title was Our Word N Word Gets Turned Into Ground Beef. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's up there. So the starts with the video starts in like a POV type fashion with um, an elderly African American man tied to a tree while some racist fuck faces hurl rocks at him and call him obscenities, and he's gagged and. <sighs> Southern accents at all, man. Just real backwoods shit. Like, not to talk about shit about everybody. Everybody in the South isn't racist, but it's just so stereotypical it's sickening on top of what happens. Okay, so there's apparent there's an apparent sixth culprit, because there's five guys doing this on camera. Uh, five men loaded up their shotguns, and the, vic the victim struggled and tried to scream as these hillbilly pieces of shit lined up their shots from a few feet away and just unloaded shotguns into them. Now... He was somehow still alive, and he spit out the gag in blood and tried to scream, which they silenced with another shotgun blast to the chest. This one ripped open his chest, shattering his ribs. You could literally see this guy's organs moving and his heart beating as he got jolted from the blast. Now, the next thing that happened made this even worse, okay? Uh, they literally just started unloading boxes of bullets on him. Obviously, he died long before they were done, but the end result was literally a set of legs, some bones visible, and mush everywhere. They literally unloaded shotgun rotation of just shotgun blast, shotgun blast, shotgun blast until he was made into, like, nothing. He like, going, you know, who, we, and everything. It, it was pretty, uh, it's pretty fucking terrible. It, and I, it, I've seen a few references to this video as well, confirming that it's real, uh, I have not actually looked at it, but the description alone is enough to turn me the fuck off of it. And I think that it's one of the most depraved racial crimes that is not talked about. And it's really, really disturbing. And there's rumors of them making more videos that people claim to have seen. So I really hope that's not true. Uh, I really hope that if the video was taken down because of a police investigation and they, you know, fucking get these guys. But there's no telling for sure. But it's most definitely a disturbing video, and that's why it's where it's at. Last on this level is something particularly disturbing because I have seen this and I don't remember where. Uh, it was, I guess it was originally uploaded the best gore as after school special, but it's popular. It's popularly pushed around as another title and I forget what, but it's based off of a black and white poster that's over the bed in this video. It says dig, like dig something. And it revolves around men hovering over beds of sleeping children around the age of 10 and they produce knives and stab them to death. And they wake up in the middle of this obviously trying not to die but inevitably get killed in their sleep well attempted to be killed in their sleep anything involving children is fucking terrifying and i was gr gra uh, just grievously fucking fearful of in home intruders growing up it's a scary thought i think it's in the back of everybody's mind is a scary fear but this video is just particularly disturbing and there's no information i can really find about it i found one reddit post talking about it and uh, i actually can't even find that right now just to kind of reference some stuff so I hope to never see that again, and I really hope that nobody else has to, but that's definitely out there, and that's why it's here, is the contents of it are just absolutely disturbing, and I feel it needs to be here. Now we're on to the bonus abyss, and I've saved this stuff that are, you know, for things that are fascinating and dark, yet not confirmed to be real. They could possibly be a rumor, or maybe they're just so bad that we think they're urban legends just like Daisy's Destruction. But starting off this level, we're going to talk about a video called Green Ball, which I actually have a full video on working on coming out about that. And so I'll be a little bit brief for this one. But it's another video rumored to come from the dark web and focus on the torture of children. Surprise. Surprise. Oops. Sorry. The only thing that seems off about the description is the consistencies between the theatrics of the video and the footage I used for my Dafu Love video, which actually come from a movie called American Guinea Pig. Uh, you know, American Guinea Pig, like, bouquet of blood and guts or something, I forget. And it's a cult core porn movie, basically. And we'll talk about Dafu Love in a minute, too. Uh... However, the video is supposedly of, uh, devolves around <laughs> into torturing young girls and cutting their fingers off, but eventually focuses on dissolving children in acid and injecting them with uh, things and disemboweling them. It's really fucking weird by the description. And at some point, they drain a fluid from an infant and put it in it turns green and they put it in some sort of sphere, and then the text green ball comes up and finishes it. Uh, 
excuse me, it is said that you can hear many kids screaming in the background. So whether that's real or not is up in the air, uh, especially considering the consistency of this, consistencies excuse me, in the description based on the clip I mentioned. But nonetheless, the possibility of it being real is very possible, just whether the story is warped about the reality or not. So I actually never say, oh, it's fake for sure, because Daisy's destruction will forever stand as a testament to not all urban legends are fucking stories. And the world apparently gets so dark and twisted that there's probably worse things out there that we can't even think about to put together yet, but somebody else has. And that's disgusting. But next, speaking of Dafu Love, and I actually did make a video about this as well, we have it on the list because if the contents of this video are to... Well, if the video is to be true, if it's true, that's what I'm trying to say in better words than I'm putting, then it definitely belongs here because it involves, of course, the torture of children and is possibly produced by Peter Scully. So possibly, if it were to be true, could be a part of Daisy's destruction because, as I mentioned, that they it just wasn't just one video. Uh, but supposedly two men torture uh, infants, specifically infants, including taking a hammer and chisel to one skull while it's still alive, and then using them as pillows for a pillow fight as well to babies <laughs> oh oh, oh, why? oh fucking really i think that if this movie or well if this video is real that it'd be highly disturbing but i highly recommend you check out my video to get like the full details of what it's supposed to be about but back to the footage of the american guinea pig thing that is commonly shared around as supposed footage from dafula but it's also the description for green ball so it's really no telling whether this shit's real or fake but there's obviously some fake stories added to this to add some spook factor but hopefully we will uh never know unless we find out that like i, I don't even know I, I don't want that to come to the surface web that's terrifying they even apparently disembowel a baby rectally and use a chainsaw it's it's a hot mess even to think about but while it may exist, it may not even be tied to Scully, because I highly doubt he's the worst monster on the internet. Just saying. Which is really fucking disturbing. But onward, again, we're going to discuss something I recently made a video about. I don't know, I, I said I wouldn't do this, but this is this is, needs to be on here because of the infamy of the story. And it's Vorsk Snuff R73. Not Snuff R73, there's a difference. Check out my video and figure that out. Now, the base, base thing here we should know is that Snuff R73, it exists. Okay? It's just a montage of gore. There's no uh, cheese pizza, if you will, in it. There's no child pornography in it. And the way it goes here is it's literally just a ripoff of another gore montage, Faces of Death style in the New Age, called M.D. Pope, uh, most despicable person on planet Earth. Or, yeah. And uh, the story goes around that there's an uncut version sold on the dark web that's three hours and 30 minutes long and involves necropedophilia. And it's kind of like, my thought on it is, if you made this movie and have like a fucking DVD cut, but it's well known that you produced some child necrophilia shit on the deep web, you're, you'd be in jail. This is some hype story around it. However, it could have taken inspiration from something that truly is on the dark web, because if Peter Scully shit was out there, again, the best example, is necropedophilia really that far off the scale here that it wouldn't exist? It's disgusting, but it's no doubtly out there, and the most disgusting part is, is I'm sure there's a big market for it, and that's fucking scary. And possibly the most interesting mention on this list is the David Berkowitz snuff films, yes, the son of Sam himself, possibly did not act alone, and that's a theory that's been tossed around since he was arrested, I believe, in the early 80s or late 70s. Now, he was one of the most prolific serial killers in U.S. history, uh, killing six people, injuring ten, one by a knife point, and he killed people in New York City at night, you just walk up and shoot him with a 44. Now, the thing about this case is that, again, it's long theorized that he possibly worked uh, did not work alone, and he kind of just backed into a corner with this, I heard demons thing. But in the 1990s, David Berkowitz said he admitted and retracted a statement saying that he was part of a, quote, satanic cult, and they his initiation rights basically were to make snuff films. Like, he would go up, and they'd be posted in a car with the door slightly open recording while he shot people. And he, ret he recanted the statement. Now... If this is true, that means there was commercial snuff films in the late 70s, and David Berkowitz himself is the star of some of these that have no doubt have circulated successfully and not been found. And I believe this theory, actually. I fully believe it. I don't see why it'd be hard to believe. He's kind of a little bitch if you think about how he acts now and how he is. And, he, and a lot of killers do that, where they either make things up 
to give benefit of the doubt here and generally either make things up or they will admit shit later on and then retract and i mean it's it's up in the air if it's real or not there i highly doubt we'll ever see these come to light and but i believe they're out there personally but that's just my opinion now the last entry on my list was actually shared to me by somebody on discord who did not want me bringing their name out there and i can't tell you if it's actually true or not but the descriptions of these sound absolutely terrifying, but they're a video pair called homunculus.avi and chimera.avi, which I'm immediately getting like Full Metal Alchemist vibes. Uh, but from what I'm seeing and what I've found on it, which is not a whole lot of information on these, is that this is far from an anime. <laughs> Homunculus is apparently the first video that is supposed to be played, I, I guess. But it apparently revolves around a woman who is restrained on all fours in one of those, like, dog grooming, like, harness-looking things and is being violently raped by an animal. And it's hard to tell what the animal is, but it looks like a large one. Some people who have seen this, I guess, say that it's possibly a horse, and especially based off the amount of blood you can audibly hear hitting the floor and her screaming, I would imagine it's not a small animal. Not the kind of video I would like to indulge in, by the way. I am not a fan of that. That is fucking horrifying, but apparently she's begging it for be like she's not gag so she's supposed to be begging and screaming and you know it's a nightmare it was a nightmare to read the description for that but then apparently chimera continues into the dark almost like just with this lab like room with a pregnant woman strapped to the bed you can't see her face uh but it's presumably the same woman I, d I don't know again i haven't seen these i don't go on the dark web and diddle around in the dark places if you will to look for shit i'm not that desperate for reviews you can see her body like making breathing motions but she's not struggling or screaming at this time uh they it, they remove the baby via c-section and then it cuts to the baby on the table uh, very underdeveloped and they inject it with something and then they start removing its arms with a dremel saw okay yeah. Now, supposedly the video continues with the removal of another infant from another restrained pregnant woman uh, next to the other that was out of view of the camera at the time. Uh, the infant is apparently deformed and very sickly, and they basically swap the limbs of the babies with the Dremel saw and sewing, and it. Uh, and then they sew them back into the woman who scream, who the women who scream the entire time. I guess apparently coming out of sedation. And if these are real, I have no idea. But to even think, holy shit, and the fact that these could be real. It, this really disturbs me, and I don't know if that's a creepy pasta, but if you guys have any information on this, do not share the fucking video or anything. But if you guys have seen this and can confirm it's real, uh, let me know down in the comments below. I'd really like to know because this is something that's up there with the likes of other urban legends, if you will. In my in my eyes, it is just profoundly grotesque sounding if it's real. But God, like holy shit, man! But I added it to the iceberg because this is some next level shit, all in all. But with that, we've reached the end of the iceberg. So this it was an iceberg that I made inspired by others I've seen. Now I will cover other icebergs if you'd like and pre-made ones, but I figured I would do something just a little different and try to make my own just for originality's sake and entertainment. Try to get some more obscure things on there as well as well-known stuff. So if you have an iceberg request or another video request, please share it down below. Uh, this includes cases and other things like that. But definitely join the Discord. Uh, thank you for sitting around for an hour with me. Uh, check out the links in the description. Follow me on TikTok, Twitter. Uh, a lot of people have been following my Instagram. I barely use it, though, guys. Definitely connect with me on Discord, though. I'm in there a lot. I'm trying to work on getting more emojis in there. I've been lazy. And uh, definitely check out the Patreon. I'm going to link that Infamous 4 trailer uh, down below in the comments. I'm going to pin it. And we're actually coming to the close of the art contest here. And I'm really excited for that. So I can't wait to announce the winner once I decide. But if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. Go down in the comments below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what's the worst stuff you think. Let me know if you disagree with me. Let me know if you have a suggestion. And let me know if you fucking know if any of these actually do exist or not. Also, one thing to note, too. Uh, share this video. Start sharing my content. Help me out. A lot of people want to see me grow. Uh, that's just what my input on it. The best thing you can do. Um, a lot of people are like, hey, join my Patreon. No, that's up to you. But... One thing that can help me, and it's absolutely free, just clicking subscribe real quick. Enjoy the videos when I put them up, and uh, share them with your friends and family if you, if you you know, it's appropriate. I mean, don't be like, hey, this guy talks about murder. Unless that's your family's thing. Uh, but, 
yes help me get out there is the best way you can help me out and it's absolutely free so i definitely appreciate every single one of you who sat down to watch this video and watch all my other content and truly enjoy me it's very surreal but thank you so much for joining me today and or tonight whenever you're watching this and uh let me know how i did thanks